All right, and welcome everyone to learning how to Zoom for your business. It's a really great way to effectively and easily use Zoom for your business. My name is Stephanie, and I really appreciate you joining me today as we are gonna talk a little bit about how to use Zoom for your business. And at the end, I'm going to share an opportunity with you along with giving you a nice Zoom cheat sheet. And this will be recorded, so you will get this in a recording. So again, if you did not get a chance to write down everything, don't worry, you will get the recording um, tomorrow. And again, if you want to stick around to the very end to learn a little bit more about how I can assist you along with your business. And again, don't worry about taking extensive notes because you will get this in recording along with a guide on how to use it. So before we begin, you are probably wondering what is zoom <laughs> how to use zoom for your business that's probably why you came and how to make a zoom meeting private is what we're going to kind of discuss today along with how to record a zoom meeting and how to use the um, training let me see if i got a chat thing in here also cool and how to use um, zoom and to reuse the video content for your business. I'm really big on creating content once, using it over and over and over again. And I'm also going to send you some awesome tips for um, Zoom. And again, you can also, another thing is if you don't wanna be on video, feel free, you can also take your video off by just stopping the video. So as you can see here, I can easily stop the video and you won't see me. My promise to you is that you will have a better understanding at the end of this um, training on how to use the settings for your business and how to use it so it's not holding you up when you're doing meetings, creating content, holding classes, workshops, webinars, and a whole lot more. And at the very end of this, I will also give you um, a bonus, which would be that guide that will be sent to you. And you'll learn some really crucial things for you to understand when it comes to like how to use Zoom when it comes to your business. So again, these are some of the things that we're gonna be covering. What is Zoom? How to use Zoom for your business? How to get started using the Zoom platform? How to make a meeting in Zoom private? Because we've heard a lot about the privacy settings when it comes to things. Uh, you can also how to record a meeting and how to reuse it for video content for your business, whether that's YouTube or whatever it may be. And then tips for utilizing the Zoom platform. If this sounds like you, then you might be able to um, relate and understand why you know, Zoom is a really great thing. You had to close your doors because of the COVID-19 crisis, and you're looking for ways to reach your clients during this pandemic. You're thinking about starting a business or online, and you've heard that Zoom is a really great platform to do it. And, or maybe you want to host a webinar, an interview, family gatherings, maybe things such as a shower or a meeting utilizing the Zoom platform. Well, we're going to leave this whole webinar with all of this training and you'll have so many different ideas on how to use Zoom for your business along with your personal life. And this webinar is not for you if you're gonna get offended at the end if I you know, offer you an offer to work a little bit more extensively with me to take your business online. And if you are um, wanting to, you know, maybe if you're saying, hey, I want to take a signature program and create an online program course or service, that's what I end up doing and helping a lot of my clients. So a little bit about me. My name is Stephanie. And first of all, I just want to let you know, I do not work for Zoom. So kind of wish I did because I'm always using the Zoom platform and I wish that they would hire me, but maybe <laughs> they will after doing this. But seriously, I love the platform and I've been using it in my business since 2016. Uh, I am an online business consultant and I work with female entrepreneurs, mostly mompreneurs, that are building service-based businesses from the ground up to six figures. And I do this with my three S's, which is strategy, systems, and support. I am the founder of Mama Hustle, a networking group for mompreneurs that need business and personal support to effectively grow their business while raising their families without losing their sleep and their sanity. And prior to being a business coach, I had actually conducted my health coaching business online since 2016, so for over four years. 
I'm also an Amazon uh, number one bestselling author for a book called Oh My Health There Is Hope. I love that. Um, really great book with a lot of other co-authors in it. And I have been featured on the local Fox 2 Detroit wellness segment, a lot of it from doing trainings like this and conducting my business online. Um, so again, my superpower is I like to help service-based businesses expand and thrive in the economic downturn by taking their businesses online and being able to serve their ideal clients. And that's probably the reason why you are here is because you're trying to figure out how can I can continue to conduct business in the upcoming weeks or months, or maybe your business that you work for is now um, saying that you're going to do everything virtually and you're trying to understand how to use this platform. So let's dive into today's session on Zoom so that you can leave this class with a better understanding on how to use it for your business. So why Zoom? Zoom is a really great platform because it's a conferencing tool and it allows individuals to meet up and work together productively face-to-face -to -face while meeting in a room in person is not possible. This makes meeting remotely way more easy and it's a lot more of a human touch with essentials in order to help the user feel and stay more connected. There's a whole lot of other platforms out there. I know Google used to have Meet, uh, Hangouts, now it has Google Meet, and Facebook, as of uh, two days ago, just did Facebook Rooms. The video quality I found for Facebook and for Google is not that great. That is the reason why I still utilize the Zoom platform because I feel that the video quality is a lot better. You probably have tried the other two platforms and you might notice that there's a huge lag time and that's really upsetting when you're trying to conduct a great meeting, hold a webinar. Um, there's also a ton of other ones um, that you can use for webinars, but again, I like Zoom for the usability. This year, Zoom alone has grown rapidly surrounding the concerns of the coronavirus and it's estimated that the company has added about 2.2 um, million, sorry, 2.2 22 million active users so far in 2020, all with that coming, of course, from the COVID-19 crisis. So you might be wondering, what is Zoom? Again, Zoom is a cloud-based video conferencing platform that has been used for video conferencing meetings, audio conferencing, webinars, meeting recordings, and live chat, according to Zoom is the most popular video conferencing solution for companies with 500 um, employees or fewer and the second most popular solution for companies with more than 500 employees after Skype for business. And Skype was probably one of the, the first ones that kind of came on to the scene. Then Zoom, then of course you had Google Hangouts and now the Facebook um, Meet. And in regards to this, the um, Zoom meeting, which is what we're gonna be talking about in a moment, that is um, the foundation of Zoom. So it's in terms of refers to video conferencing meetings, using the platform that allows remote and co-located meeting attendees communication. And since you um, probably maybe don't have a Zoom account, it really, really allows you to connect with your clients and conduct interviews, having remote access to family members. You can um, do any of your trainings, your webinars, all of that stuff simply by using the Zoom meeting, which we'll talk about for you. Um, a Zoom meeting just simply refers to a meeting that is hosted using Zoom, and attendees can join in the meeting like you did today. Um, and they can meet face-to-face -face via webcam, video conferencing camera, or via phone. So it gives you multiple different options. The person that is joining does not necessarily have to have a Zoom account. They can easily call in. Um, so you can use it as a conference line too. So the first thing let's talk about is that there's multiple different plans for your business. Zoom free, which is the one that most people start off with, that has about 45 minutes or 40 minutes of time in which you can have your um, call. It's great if you're doing a meeting under 40 minutes, not so great if you're doing anything longer than that. And then the next one would be Zoom Pro, which is about $15 a month. And that allows you to have unlimited amount of time. And we'll go over some of those pricings and what they all include when I show you the actual Zoom screen. So don't worry about that. Um, then there's also Zoom Business, which is $20 a month. And then there's an the Enterprise, which is gonna be $20 more. And there's a lot of different add-ins that you can add on it. And I will show you a little bit more about that in a moment. Um, again, so the Zoom Room 
is a physical hardware setup that allows companies to launch the meetings from conference rooms. Zoom Rooms is a software defined as video conferencing hardware system for conference room that allows users to schedule, launch, and run an actual meeting via the Zoom platform with a push of a button. These rooms require additional subscription for up to, um, to having like more people if you want to have more than 100 people in it. And all you really need for this is having a computer to sync and run your Zoom meetings, a tablet for attendees to launch the Zoom meetings, a microphone and camera and a speaker. Um, you can have one to two HD TV monitors to display the remote meeting and an HDMI cable. So again, when it comes to the pricing, the pricing all just kind of depends on the length of time that you want. Um, the free one, again, is about 40 minutes in length. The pro version is going to be a little bit longer. It's allowing the meetings to be not only recorded, but you can also record it using the cloud software. So if you're familiar with like Dropbox or Google Drive or any of those things, you can record it via cloud and send the recordings to your um, your guest afterwards using that, or you can download it directly onto the computer, which I do. Um, the business one is going to be a little bit more, and that's going to let you have a vanity URL and company branding. So for that, for business one, I can actually get the $20 a month and I can have my URL instead of it being Zoom forward slash whatever it may be that you got today. It would be Mama Hustle forward slash and it would have the information there. So that's the vanity URL. Um, you can also do company branding on it and you can have dedicated customer support. And I also believe that the other thing is you can have multiple users. So if that you have a business that maybe you need to conduct multiple meetings at the same time. Um, so let's say at 6.30 PM, you have a meeting and then your coworker needs to also use the Zoom platform for a meeting, then the business plan would be a good one because two, two or, more, or more than one user can utilize that platform. And then Zoom Enterprises for businesses that are over 1,000 employees. And this one has unlimited cloud storage for recordings, dedicated customer support manager, discounts on webinars and Zoom rooms. And this one costs about $20 a month or more. You can also add other things to any of these plans, such as the Zoom rooms, where you can sign up for a free 30-day trial. After that, it requires additional $49 a month subscription. And the webinars using the Zoom cost about $40 a month. So I'm actually gonna show you what it is that I'm talking about right here. So let me share this other screen with you really quickly. So this is Zoom. And over here, when you are going to set up, and we'll talk about how to set up, the first thing you wanna do is you want to go to the website and it's just zoom.us, so Z-O-O-M.us. You're going to create an account um, from the website and I'm just gonna show you where my account looks like. Once you have downloaded it, you can schedule your Zoom platform. So let me sign out and kind of walk you through that process. So again, you will sign up here for free and you can create an account. Before we go there, I do wanna show you a little bit more about those plans that we talked about. So in the plan and pre um, pricing, you will see that there is the option of the free. I always tell people to start off with this one um, before you go into the other ones. And the free one allows you to host up to 100 participants. It's unlimited one-on-one -on -one meetings, 40 minute length and time for group meetings. So that's more than one person in there. Unlimited number, again, of meetings. And um, you also have support from Zoom. This one is a really great one um, to start off with if you want to have like a small team. Again, you have 100 participants. If you need to have more, you have the option of adding more people here um, just by simply clicking on that. And that would be, I would say, only utilizing it if you have a couple of meetings that you know that's gonna go over it. This one, the difference between the pro and the free is that the meeting time is not 40 minutes, but you have unlimited 24 hour ones. So as long as you know your meeting doesn't go over 24 hours, which most likely none of you would have that meeting that goes over 24 hours, this would be a great plan for it. This allows you to also have a couple of more admin controls. You can do reporting and see how things are going. You have a customer personal meeting ID that you can have. You can assign a scheduler. You have more storage space. This allows you to have um, the cloud storage space, which this one does not. 
And then you have the other options of doing more um, add-ons and they just continue to keep adding more and more things such as adding more space, having a room connector joined by dialing at the um, toll free thing. So there's more and more things that you can add. And of course, as you go into business or enterprise, it just keeps adding more options here. So that's that vanity URL that we were talking about where you can simply create your own business name. So it would be, again, like for me, mamahustle.zoom.us. Um, if that's something that you are interested in, and then you can just manage domains. There's just a little bit more custom emails. So it just adds on depending on where you need to be. So in order to start using Zoom, the first thing you need to do is you need to go and create an account uh, if you don't already have one. And once you have selected the Zoom plan, you just simply go over here and you're going to sign up here. I've already signed up, so you don't have to <laughs> worry about seeing me to do that. But then the next one, and I want to go back to my slides, is after you download the app, you want to sync it to your calendar. It syncs really well to Google Calendar. Um, I really like that because you can actually schedule your meetings in Google Calendar and I'll show you how to do that. And then you are going to schedule your very first meeting. So here is how it looks like in a Google Calendar integration. So if you pull up your Google Calendar and you make your um, meeting, you can simply put down whatever the title is for your meeting, your time, and then you'll notice that once you have linked your Google um, account to your Zoom account. So I usually sign in via my Google account, which you'll see in a moment. Um, it will give me the option when I'm on my Google Calendar to make it into a Zoom meeting. And at that point in time, it will take me back over to my Zoom platform and I can create that meeting via Zoom and I can have a custom link. And so when I add the participant via my calendar on here, it shows up as a meeting invite for them and they are automatically have their Zoom link for them. So that's a really great way of being able to integrate your Google Calendar um, and your scheduling software all, uh, and your Zoom software all at the same time. The next one is that you can do it directly via the desktop and this is what the desktop looks like. So when you download the app on your desktop, you'll see a screen like this. And there would be a little Zoom icon that will show up. But when you open up the icon, you will see a home screen, you know, all of these things, home screen, chat, mess, uh, meetings, and contacts. To schedule one, you're just going to simply, you can either start a meeting right here and it will automatically start, or you can actually put it on your schedule down the line. When you put it on the schedule and you click this button, you're going to see a screen that looks like this. And on that screen, you'll be able to put your topic of it, set your time, make sure the biggest thing, and this happens a lot, is that it likes to set it for a time zone that's way different than my actual time zone. So make sure that you have set the correct time zone. There's a couple of times that I have done it. I'm in Eastern Standard Time, and sometimes it's um, done Central or Pacific Standard Time. And I, um, end up finding that my participants end up coming into a meeting when I'm not ready for it. You can also set it up as a reoccurring meeting directly from the desktop. From here, you have the option of turning your video on or off. And then for you as the host or the participants can do on and off. And then you have the option. And I usually tell people when I go through the options a little bit more in detail, but I usually let people know that you probably want to give them the option of doing telephone and computer and just because a lot of the times people might be running around doing something and they still want to get onto that call with you, this gives them the option of dialing in by phone. They don't have to necessarily be at their desktop in order to do it. And then for security reasons, and we'll talk about this a little bit later on, you can require a meeting password. So they actually have to have a certain password. This is prevents extra other people from coming on in. And again, we'll cover that in a moment from coming in. And then you can link it to your calendar. So as I calendar, or Google Calendar are the two in which you can actually link it to. So as we discussed, we're going to talk about how to make that meeting private. Um, and the main reason why we want to make it private is that you probably have heard that there's been a lot of privacy issues when it comes to any of these web conferencing things where people can just jump on into a meeting. Um, and it's not really professional on your end conducting business if you are conducting business and next thing you know, uh, 
your family member just happens to jump on in, or maybe your next appointment jumps on in into the meeting. And I've had, had that happen where I've been on business calls with someone else and they haven't set up a password, they haven't set up an individual account for them. And what ends up happening is that um, someone else jumps on in. And the telephone option, yes. So great question. The telephone option is, I believe, included in the free plan. Yes. Um, so you can easily get that in the free plan. Um, so again, just for, just for professionalism, it's smart to uh, set up your meetings and having them as private and then having them as separate meetings. Because um, I have, again, been on a meeting that someone else has conducted and we're in the middle of a conversation and then the next person that they had on their schedule maybe have joined like five or 10 minutes early just because they wanted to get a heads up and now they're jumping in into our private conversation. And it's just not a very professional way of doing. And so this is actually called Zoom boom on bombing. So Zoom bombing occurs when an uninvited, uninvited guest gains access to your Zoom meeting. They join in the middle of the meeting and they pretty much interrupt the meeting, right? Luckily, you could prevent this by setting up your privacy settings. So the big thing is that you want to create a passcode. So when you're looking at Zoom bombing, make sure you have a password and I'll show you how to do that. You can also use the feature of waiting room feature. You can limit who can share your screen and you can lock the meeting. So the first thing we'll talk about, and I'll show you how to do all this stuff from the Zoom platform, so don't worry, is that we'll talk about the creating a password. When you schedule a new meeting under the password section, click on the checkbox next to require meeting password, and I'll show you how to do that. This allows you to type a strong password that you can share with the meeting participants. Participants will be asked to enter the password to join the meeting. Those who do not have a password will not be able to join the meeting. So I'm going to go back and toggle back to my Zoom screen. And again, I'm going to stop share and just make sure that I'm on the right screen. So I'm going to log into my account here. Again, mine is set up with Google. So as I sign in, perfect. Get rid of all these pages. I'm going to schedule a new meeting. And this is on my free one. So you'll see it on my free one and I can show you in a moment on how to do it on the other one. Actually, let me log out of the free one because it'll be a little bit easier to show you on the other one. Oh, well, it doesn't want me to do that. Okay, so anyways, when I'm scheduling a new meeting here, it gives me the option of creating a personal meeting ID or generating a separate one. And then here is where I can put into the password. So let's go, here I'm putting in my topic. I can put in a description if I want to in here. I can set my time and if this is a reoccurring meeting, I can do that. As you can see with the basic plan, it only has a 40 minute time limit. So I have to make sure that I'm setting it for 40 minutes or less. Otherwise I need to upgrade and this is for a free account. From here in the meeting ID, this is your personal meeting ID. This is just kind of giving it out to anyone or I can generate a particular one just for this meeting. And it gives me the option of requiring a password. This allows me to give out this password and then my participants need to be able to use this password in order to come in. I can also enable them to enter before the, the host joins or I can do that waiting room feature. And that waiting room feature is really great because it allows the meeting host to determine what participants can enter into the meeting. So pretty much it's just like at an office where they would have to wait outside um, and you'll get this screen that kind of comes up and says, you know, waiting for the host to start the meeting. I could be in the meeting and I will see that there's people that need to come on into the meeting and I can enable those people to come in. So if someone happens to come into the meeting a little bit earlier than my next one and I notice that, you know, Joe is entering into my meeting five minutes before um, need be and I'm still wrapping up my other one, I can keep him in that waiting room and not um, bring him on in until it's time for him to come on in. This prevents that Zoom bombing from happening. And then you can also do an option of limiting who can share the screen. Um, and so that is under your other settings, which I will show you. 
when you are scheduling your meeting. Again, you can have it to join before the host, which I did for this meeting. So a lot of people can join a little bit earlier. I can turn that on or off. I can also enable my personal meeting ID here. I can use my personal meeting ID when scheduling my meetings. I can turn that one on and off. Again, I can require to have a password on the free one now because of the fact that um, all the security stuff, they're giving you this option. On the paid one, you can have an option of turning it on and off. Again, you have all of the, the you know, requiring password. This is all the things that kind of come in. I like to mute my participants upon entry um, just because hearing that ding, noise um, or hearing backroom chatter every time someone comes in maybe that person um, didn't realize that their microphone is on and they're in the middle of a conversation with someone else it just can be very um, distracting so you can turn that option on too and then you can also give them a reminder letting them know that there's things that are coming up um, so these are some of the filters and i'll just go through all of them in the basics uh, you can have the chat option which some of you have already used to ask questions so you can put that on or off and then i can also do an extra thing which prevents people from saving the chat um, and saving the chat just pretty much means that there's an option on the chat thing where you can click on to the side and it allows you to save the chat conversation that's really useful. I've been in meetings and I've hosted meetings before where I ask people to put in their contact information so that other participants can be able to reach out to them, you know, put their business information and links and URLs and all that fun stuff in there. Um, and it's nice for that person to be able to simply save the chat and they don't have to worry about, let me write down and jot down all this information. Um, or I can prevent them from doing that. I can make it private, which is an option that um, a few of you have used here too, where they can send a message directly to me or to another participant in class. So if there's a message that they wanna send directly to me and they don't want everyone else to see, I can be able to see that message um, and vice versa, you can send a message to somebody else. You can transfer files, feedback. So these are all different types of settings. And then this is that screen share setting that we were talking about, limiting who can actually share the screen. And this right here, I have it as only the host. So I'm the only one that can do it. That means that someone else can't come into my meeting and just all of a sudden start taking over and share the screen. I would actually have to, on my end, um, on the actual uh, settings end, I would have to change that up so that I can make someone else a host and then they can share the screen here. And that's just a really nice setting, again, so that someone's not bombing your, um, your meeting. Those are gonna be the majority of the ones that you're gonna use. This whiteboard is really nice. If you're doing something like a classroom and you're used to writing on a whiteboard, it actually gives you that option of writing onto that, um, like an actual whiteboard, of course. It's going to look a lot like those electronic signatures that you have. It's not going to be the prettiest. Um, so if you're not great with doing electronic signature, you might not want to do the whiteboard setting because it's going to look like chicken scratch. At least it does for me when I use the whiteboard because it looks like chicken scratch. <laughs> and I'm not going to allow. Um, and then you can allow a remove participant to rejoin. Um, so it gives you other settings on here. You can they, they can rename themselves if they want to change their name on their thing. They can be able to do that. Um, so there's a lot of other options. Breakout rooms is a really nice thing, and I have that on my settings here. Breakout rooms allow you to have, um, let's say if you have a meeting as large as this is, like it's 16 people in here so far, we had a total of, I think, 36 people that have signed up. So let's say we have a mass meeting, but we want to do some small brainstorming sessions. I can actually click on this option and having it when I'm scheduling my meeting to be a breakout room. And I can set up how many people I want in those individual breakout rooms. And that we can play around with that option after the recording um, so that you can see exactly what that looks like. Uh, and, and in that, I can pretty much say, out of the 30 people that I have in the room, I want to limit it down to maybe three people working together. And I have, you have the option of actually selecting who those people are. So maybe it's a person on your team and it's um, your tech team. And you wanna make sure that the tech team are working on something and then your marketing team. So you can actually select who those people are gonna be in each of those breakout sessions and how long those breakout sessions are gonna be. When that happens, a screen comes up on the user's end that allows that user to click on it and saying, yes, I wanna go into that breakout room. And then they go from the mass room to a smaller room as the other participants start to come in. And they'll get a warning that lets them know. So let's say if we timed it for 10 minutes, they'll get a warning that lets them know, hey, 
um, one minute to go, we got to wrap up. And if they haven't wrapped up and joined back to the main room, it will automatically, once that timer is done, bring them back to the main room. So it's a really great way of taking a large room, breaking up into the small rooms. I use it for my networking um, when I have a large group of people and I want them to network with one another. I just break up the room so they can have more like one-on-one -on -one time or small group times and they can talk to each other in a smaller group versus trying to have 30 people in one room. Um, so those are all of the options, closed captioning. Uh, you can just kind of set up and I would say play with these. Virtual background is a fun one. Uh, <laughs> I don't personally use it, but my husband, when he uses my Zoom account, he has set up a couple of them and you'll see some people will have it where they're looking like they're on a beach um, or they can pick photos from their own photo collection. It's really weird on how to use it. I'm not a big fan of it. I don't think it's very professional, but if you want to have a little bit of fun, feel free to use that. And then again, this is some of your chat settings that you have and then enabling that waiting room option too. That's another security thing that you are able to do um, just so that that person has to wait in that waiting room before you accept them into the room. So I'm gonna go back again to my slides. And after we've gone through all of that, the next one is again, how can we limit to share the screen? So again, you can limit it to one participant or you can have it to multiple and you can select if you want only the host only the participants, you can select those settings when it comes to sharing the screen. Now, talking about the screen, a lot of um, people have a hard time even navigating the screen. When you're starting a meeting, the first thing I always do is set up the audio settings. That's key, right? At the end of the day, if they can't hear you and you can't hear them, then there's no point in having an actual virtual meeting. So in order to do that, what you're gonna do is gonna come over to where it says join audio, or you see this little up arrow that I'm pointing to right here. You're gonna click onto that screen. Um, if you, and I'll let every one of you try to click on it right now. So if you were to click on that screen, it should look right next to your um, button that says mute. Uh, it, it should look like a microphone and um, have that little up arrow just like you see here. If you click on it, it gives you the option to select your microphone and then select your speaker. Now, this might not be an issue if you're using your built-in microphone and um, your speakers on your computer. For me, I'm using my AirPods, and so I'm able to use that, or if I have an external microphone, which I use when I'm doing podcasting, I can actually select to have my microphone be my external microphone and my speakers to be my AirPods, and that just makes it better sound quality from when I'm podcasting. But again, it gives you that option. If you're having a hard time and someone cannot hear you, if you go down a little bit further, so I'll have every one of you click on that arrow again, um, you see that it says select microphone, select speaker. Then in the next section, it will give you the option of testing your speaker and your microphone. And if you click on that, it gives you this option of do you hear a ringtone? And you can say yes. And then it lets me speak and it gives me the option of doing that and I can hear that and I can say yes. So those are the two options and you can test those out to make sure that things work really well. You can also switch to your um, phone audio or you can leave it for your computer audio. So this gives you the options if your phone or your um, computer is not working, you can switch and navigate between those two things. The next one here is going to be a, a really important one. Is going to be your um, your start video and so this allows you to turn on there we go or turn off your video so you can pop on or off you can also go over there and you can select your camera um, and which camera you want to do and you can select your virtual background so i'm going to start my video and you'll see me off to the side and this is this virtual background option and I'm going to click a beach. And you can now see a beach behind me. Now, the only thing about it is that sometimes, like I've been waving my hands right now, it's very blurry. <laughs> and I have had people use this. If they look up, it looks like they have chopped off their head. And it's kind of freaky. I'm not going to lie when it looks like I'm talking to a headless person. <laughs> so use this with discretion. Some of the settings that you have for your virtual background would be this setting grass. I can look like I'm in outer space. 
I can um, have like a video, which is a Northern Lights behind me. I can have that beach video, which is behind me. And then I can also set up some other ones, which I think this is a photo that my husband had uploaded along with this one from one of his ski trips. So you can upload your own ones. I'm not a big fan of this because again, as I'm moving my hands and my body around, it just looks very distracting. Um, and it does, I mean, I don't know, some people like it, some people don't. Let me see what the chat says. Oh, so sorry, no one see my background. Okay, so let me pick a background. Sorry about that. I wanna choose this background. And can you see, can you see my video? Okay, so you can see the video and it looks like in behind me, there looks like palm trees. That's that virtual background that I'm talking about. And I can easily do that again by clicking on this button, this up arrow button, selecting down, and it's gonna give me the option of choosing a virtual background. So I can have that, or can you see this one where it looks like it's now um, a tower, or sorry, it looks like the Golden Gate Bridge behind me. That's the virtual background. I'm gonna take it off because I don't need it. Okay, good. So I'm glad everyone was able to see those. Perfect. The other one I wanna just show you, this is the option of you can invite people into your, your meeting. So you, uh, let's say uh, you wanna invite someone else on board, you can just simply click onto that button and then invite someone else that, via email. And then you have the option of managing your participants. So just like I'm clicking on here, if you click on the manage participant button on your end, you should be able to see everyone that is participating in this. And then I'm able to go directly on my end as a, as a user, I can go directly on here and I can mute or unmute the person. And if you see it on your end, you should see an option of raising your hand if you have any questions. And at that point in time, let's say if I'm a presenter and I'm doing a classroom setting and you have a question, I can simply unmute you, you can ask that question and I'll be able to see that. So that's what you'll see on the managed participant side. The share is where we were showing you before. When you go into share, it gives you the option of sharing your screen and I can pick on that and I can click here uh, on my side, I have an option of sharing my whole desktop, a particular screen or the whiteboard setting. And I'll show you what the whiteboard setting looks like. Uh, let's see. I am not actually that fond of the whiteboard setting. So I have the option of drawing stuff on here. Um, I'm gonna stop that share because it's not really my favorite one to use. I'll go back to my... So you have an option of doing like a classroom thing and you could play around with that too. The other one is the chat. So the chat, some of you have already used and that's where you can be able to ask any questions. And again, you can be able to not just ask questions um, to me or, or, um, or type to me, but you can send private messages to one another. The big thing I really wanted to show here was how to record. And the record setting is really nice for things such as this. When you're holding a Zoom meeting that involves multiple cross-functional team members, or you're kicking um, off a long-term project, or even doing a webinar um, or a training, you might want to use the record option. So again, you're simply going to, from your screen, you're gonna log into your Zoom account, you're gonna start your meeting as the host and click the meeting setting. You can also set it up, and I'll show you again on the other screen when you're setting up your meeting, you can set it up so it automatically records. Um, and that's a really nice feature if you forget to record. There's been a lot of times in which I've held meetings and I wanted to record it and I'm halfway through the meeting and I'm like, darn, <laughs> I forgot to record the meeting. So you can set it up to automatically record and at that time, the nice thing is if you set it up to automatically record because maybe you might forget, you have the option of stopping the recording um, and then starting it back up again. So that's completely up to you on what you wanna do. But from here, what you will see on your screen will be the option um, when you are the host will be the option of recording and then you can record it onto your computer. Um, that would be the option for the free one. Or if you have the paid version, you will have the option of recording it on to the cloud. Again, remember the different plans have um, different amounts of cloud storage space that you end up having. 
I typically like to record mine on my computer and I set it up to, um, once you click on record on your computer, the next thing is gonna ask you is where do you wanna save your recordings? I set it up so it automatically saves into my Dropbox and I have it on Zoom meetings. And from there, I can find all of my meetings there. Um, and when you save the actual meeting, you will see it in a couple of formats. The first one is going to be an audio format, and then the other one will be the video format. Um, and the nice thing about recording meetings is that I use it for podcasting for some of my virtual classes that I end up having. And so I'm able to extract the video and put it onto a platform such as YouTube, um, where people can view it later on, or I can do the audio. And for my podcast, I can put the audio version onto my podcast. So it makes it very nice. Um, the other option is to mute yourself when you're not speaking. So this is a very basic rule of thumb when you're in a video conferencing um, etiquette. You know, most of you, or actually all of you are muted, um, and I can do that on my end by just simply going to manage participants, and I can mute and unmute you all individually. It just makes it very nice, again, because we're all at home during this, this crisis, and a lot of times things happen where it's background noise, maybe it's your kids screaming and hollering, maybe you're getting a phone call, um, maybe you need to get up and walk away from the computer, and if you are unmuted, the rest of us can kind of hear that. And there's a lot of staticky um, situations in the background. It's not very clear for the other participants. They can't hear the person that is actually hosting it. So it just makes a lot of sense to be able to mute your thing. So those are some of the ways, and I'm gonna go back really quickly before we get to this screen. And once more, I wanna stop the share, make sure that I'm sharing the proper screen with you. One moment. I'm gonna go back to the Zoom setting so I can show you that. I'm actually going to sign out and see if I can see if I can sign into my other email really quickly. In the meantime, as we're doing this, does anyone have any questions as I'm pulling up this other screen? Because I want to be able to answer any questions that you might have. You can simply press on that uh, manage participants. And you can raise your hand and I can bring you on to the audio or you can put it into your chat box. All right, so give you a moment for questions. And if no one has questions, then I will go back to signing in now that I can sign into my business account. There we go. So let me show you the screen once more. So this is back to that Zoom screen. I'm just gonna make it a little bit larger. All right, see, there's a question. Let me see what the question is. Where do I put a picture on my camera and um, where do I put a picture on your camera when it's turned off? Okay, that is a good question. So in that, you're gonna go that, you can do that in your profile settings. So when you go to your profile, oh, there you go. You can change this photo. And so this is for one of my businesses. I, I have a meditation business and that is our logo. And I can simply put my actual photo there. And that's what you'll see when your screen is off. So when you turn, when you go into your actual home screen on the Zoom website, not on the app, this is what you're gonna end up seeing. You'll see your um, username. You could change all of this stuff here. This is your personal meeting ID. You can have change your email address and all of that stuff. And then it shows you on the paid one, I'm limited to 100 people in my meeting. I can also connect my calendar if I want to um, on that one. And then when I schedule my meetings, I just wanna show you how you can schedule tons of meetings. All right, let me see what the other chat question is. The phone plan, why do you need more than one phone number? Um, in regards to the phone plan, why do you need more than one phone number? Oh, well, you're talking about when you're calling. Is that a question? Let me, let me take you off so I can see. Um, I wanna, Alex, can you tell me a little bit? You're unmuted. So can you tell me a little bit more about what you're talking about, like as far as more than one phone number to call in? Yes. So if I, um, I'm, I'm basically from a nonprofit and, and we have elderly people that um, want to call in. 
So do we have to get a phone number for each person that calls in or is it just we give one phone number out to everybody and they use that one particular phone number to call in? Oh, one, per, one phone number out to everyone. So what you see is that depending how Zoom sets it up is that they'll have multiple numbers on it based off of like where you're calling from. And if they're calling from the US or from a different country, that's where it's gonna be, but it's gonna be the same phone number. And I'll show you that one. But I'm glad I took you off of mute to, un, um, to get that question resolved. Um, so if you are going, so again, let me just kind of pull this, actually I'll pull one I have up coming up. You'll see this is another uh, one that I have. You can copy the invitation. And in the invitation, it's going to be either they join on the web, you give them this HTML, right? Um, you have a meeting ID. This one, I actually set up a password for it. So they actually have to copy and put this password and it's password protected. But then they have these options of calling in. So they have an option of calling in for Chicago, New York, and then they also give you other options here. So this, you'll see multiple phone numbers on it, but it just kind of depends on whether they're dialing in by location. I hope that, did that answer your question? Let me see, go back to the chat. Uh, yes, is it, is it free? Yeah, that, yeah, that's free. Yeah, so that should be under the free option. Um, no, sorry, they, when they call in, it's, it's a free, yes. it's a free yep. phone? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah it'll, be, it'll be free for them to call on in, yeah. So just like as you would call into your agency, it would be the exact same thing. It shouldn't be any charges on their end. Um, and then, yes, the invitation was done. My invitation that I did for this one is not, uh, was on my paid version, but I'll show you how, let's, let's schedule a meeting right now. And I'm just gonna check if there's anything else. Okay, so let's schedule a meeting. I'm gonna go into the meeting section and I'll answer any questions in a little bit. Um, so I'm gonna schedule a new meeting right here. From here, again, I can enter in my meeting information I can enter in. Uh, I can enter in my description if I want to. You can select the template. So I created. I do um, new moon meditations for one of my meditation group. So I can easily select the template, and it's going to pull up all that information. So I don't have to put all my settings in here. Then I can set this as a reoccurring meeting. I can say that they can register for it. That's a really nice thing. I've used that, and I don't know if I use that for this one or not. I can go back and look, but it gives them an extra site where they actually have to put in their, it's an extra security layer, right? Um, they actually have to put in their user, um, their email address and everything else to make sure that they are the, the right person that's coming in. And I can check it on my end to make sure that these other people are not coming into my meeting that are not required. Really great if you're paying for a program, like it's a webinar that you wanna charge someone, you want to make sure that the people are not just getting this link out of anywhere. Um, and then are the numbers limited for international call-ins? I actually, I'm trying to think. I've had a lot of people call in um, internationally using more of the link, like the actual web link versus the actual phone number. So that's a good question. I would probably go over here and ask for chat because I've had meetings with recently with people from Germany and Australia. Um, and then I, there was one person that was joining from the UK today. And they, I think they all used the link. So it's not, I mean, you can call anyone internationally, but I'm not sure if the actual phone numbers that we showed you a moment ago, if they are limited um, for international calls. But that's a good question to ask for Zoom um, support. Again, I don't work for Zoom. I'm just showing you some of the features that I have. So I would definitely ask that question. You can click on you know, this link when you create your account for that support. Then you can check which uh, meeting ID if you wanna use your personal one or if you want to generate one individually. Your password, you know, I would definitely, if you want something that you don't want people just to hop on in, you can easily create that. Your video settings again. And then this is that enable people to join before, new people upon entry, or I could do this waiting room option. And then that's the option here that I talked about, record the meeting automatically. This is a really great option if you forget to record meetings. <laughs> um, it's a really great option to have that. And then you can add additional hosts. So this could be other people in your company that you want them to join in on it. And maybe they want, you want them to share a screen, you can add them as that additional host. And so that person can also be, you know, having all the host features that you would have. And then from here, you would schedule your meeting simply by there. Um, once you have scheduled a meeting, you can go back over to this screen and you can see all the upcoming meetings that, that I have. 
I can also look back at all of my previous meetings that I had here. And then I can create my meeting templates. So meeting templates is a really great thing if I'm kind of like, this is a meeting I hold every single month. Um, instead of me having to create all those settings all over again, I just simply create this template and I'm pulling from it. So it has all the information here. It has all of my settings already on here. Um, I can do some branding if I want to do a banner and my logo and all this stuff. This is for that paid account, right? Um, I can put polls. I can do a lot of things. It just makes it easy for me to not have to put all of, like, go through all those individual settings every single time. I can just simply create a template. And then again, when I go to meetings and I schedule my meeting, it gave me that option here to select that template. So if you're going to do something and you know that you're doing this thing all the time, please save yourself a lot of time and create a template. Your recordings, if you are recording and you have the paid version, remember only the paid version allows you to do cloud recordings. The free one will allow you to record, but it would have to be saved onto your actual um, desktop. Now, if you want to record and it's, you want to save your recordings on the cloud, you will find all your recordings here. And then simply you see the file share option and I can share this meeting with someone. So I can simply click on this and it allows me to get a link and I can share that link to somebody else. Let's see, I'm gonna check the chat section again. How does a co-hosting function work? So the co-hosting function really works is that I can have myself and like, let's say you Sonia, great question. I can have myself and then you as a host. And then as a host, again, I'm limiting what I can do. Like, so you'll be able to share screens, you'll be able to use the whiteboard, you'll be able to mute participants and bring participants on just by me collecting you and putting you down as a host. I can even do it right now and I can give an option uh, on my screen is a little three button option that gives me uh, more. And I can actually end up making you a host for that meeting. That's how that one will work. Um, it's a really great function if you are doing something in partnership, like all of my meditations is myself and I have a co-host and co-founder. So we're both on that, um, we're both on that setting together. So if I have to leave or something, and then maybe say like, I have to leave the meeting early for some reason, she can still be the host of the meeting and the meeting can still go on and she'll still have the option of sharing her screen and doing all of that fun stuff without me having to be present on the um, recording. All right, does anyone see this screen that, that sh does the, the slides again? Okay, All right, so again, how do you, you can make a co-host. So in the co-host option, you can do it, and I'll show you one more time. You could set it up when you're creating your meeting. So the easiest way is if you already know that you're gonna co-host it with someone, you schedule your new meeting. This is also, you know, remember, this is on the web version, not on the app. At the very bottom, you can actually put in their email address and it gives them the option of becoming a host. The other one is if you are on the meeting and you won't be able to see it on your side because again, I'm the host for this meeting. It gives me the option, there's three little buttons that are on the upper, um, well, I guess it, for me it's upper right because I'm sharing my screen, but it might be on your lower setting and it will say more. So three little buttons and more. From there, I can go over there and I can actually have the option of making someone else a host. Once they are a host, they take over the, um, they have all of the capabilities of the owner of the account. Makes it very, very nice to be able to do that. Okay, cool, glad you got that. All right, so I'm gonna go back to I'm back to sharing my other screen again. So making sure that we go through that. All right. And then again, this is a really great way of some ways that you can use Zoom for your business and ways that I've used it for my business. You can host workshops like I just did today, um, you know, easily put it out onto Eventbrite putting it out there to your company, whatever it may be, workshops and summits. You've probably seen a lot of people use a summit version of it. Nice thing about, about summits is that you can invite people, so you can do that waiting room option. And let's say I'm the host for the summit um, and I'm interviewing Sonia, right? And I have her on for about 15 minutes doing an interview. 
and then she's done and then I can bring in you know Joe or Brian and I can invite those people in to do the next topic and it can continue to run for a good amount of time. You can also save the recordings and you can use the recordings later on for a summit that's like pre-recorded summit. It's a really great way to, to do that. So that's one way in which you can use it for workshops or summits. You can also do it for interviewing, whether that is interviewing a new employee or onboarding or training or anything else like that, coaching someone on it. I use it for my coaching, my business coaching practices. I use it for interviews for when I'm interviewing new staff members, I'm bringing on new assistants, um, training programs and things like that. Same thing with podcasts. I will record all of my, I have my podcast, um, which I'm launching a new one coming up, Mama Hustle. It's all interview stops. So I have multiple people. I have people from Germany and Austria um, and South America that has been on my podcast. And I bring all these experts in there and I'm just simply able to bring them on board, record the, um, the, the whole podcast and then use the audio and the video file later on. The video is going on to my YouTube. The audio is going on to my podcasting platform, or I can host classes. And I've, you've probably taken tons of virtual classes online. I had, um, for the last two years, been taking a class for certification that has been all done online via Zoom. So those are some of the ways in which you can be able to use the platform. Do we have any other questions? I wanna take this time to answer any questions that you might be having in regards to how to use Zoom. And feel free, again, if at this time you can unmute yourself, it's a really easy way to do that too. You can unmute yourself and we can go over questions there. Hi, Stephanie. Can you Hi. hear me? Yes, this I is can. Michelle. This is Michelle Alexander with AJM Financial. Um, I should, I, I wanted to say it again, I should have dressed up for the class, but yeah, I have to keep that uh, covered today. <laughs> but um, the question, it was around the audio again. I have the basic plan and um, I, I do, I've used Zoom before and I appreciate your workshop today so much. It's still very informative. You can always learn something new. And mm -hmm. um, I love the way you presented everything. But my question is still about the audio because I've tried that and I didn't see where it was available. Even when you have, when it says both, because it says telephone or computer or something like that, in that section it says both, it doesn't give you any numbers to share. So I didn't, I thought maybe it was just if, because it's a free plan, you don't get the audio option. You can only do it online. Let me so double if, check. if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but I'm not sure. Okay, I wanna sign, that's a good question. I wanna sign out of my paid account because I have both a paid and a free one. Um, one's on my personal, one's on the other one. So let me sign back into my, my free account. And it should give me, let me double check before I share my screen with you. No problem. It should give you the option of setting it up for um, them to come in. Okay. So I was doing all this stuff telling you I need to limit it down to less than 40 minutes. Okay. It should give you the option of saving it and then copy ID. Oh, you know what? This is something new. So maybe they got rid of it. They used to. They used to give you the option oh. of calling in for free. So this is probably something new that they did. And, hmm, that's not cool. Yeah, I just <laughs> I got on Zoom. Yeah, I've been on Zoom for, I mean, I, I bought the, the paid program prior to COVID. I've always used the free one. And I never had an issue with the phone number calling in. But I'm guessing oh. that now that COVID has taken you know, over and more people are using the platform, that they're now limiting it to just the paid version for which you can do the phone call. Okay. Um, that's, right. that's probably, yeah, because I switched over to the paid version up until, I want to say April, when I realized that majority of my business was going to be conducted online. Uh, more so like my business coaching stuff, it was never an issue because we would typically wrap up around 40 minutes or so. Uh, but um, I mean, even though it's like an hour, we only need to be on the actual platform for about 40 minutes. Um, yes. But when it came to my meditation group, we would have about 50 people participating in it and we would do a couple hours with a meditation and discussion. And so we needed to upgrade to the paid version in order for us to be able to access um, so it doesn't cut off at 40 minutes because it doesn't look really great when you're in the middle of a discussion or meditation and then you're telling them to 
oh, hold on one second, call in on this other line so we can continue, <laughs> um, yes. continue it. So I, I made that, that jump to the paid one, but I guess somewhere maybe around April, they must've, cause it used to be able to call in. That's probably when they switched it. So that's a great question. I'm glad that we went back to look at it and I apologize for um, not realizing that that was an issue. <laughs> no, no problem. You answered it perfectly. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Any other questions that you have in regards to anyone else? And again, you can unmute yourself. It might be probably an easier way of, of doing it. I know we covered a lot today. <laughs> yes. yes, hi. Um, my name is Dania Martinez. I work for a nonprofit. Um, and I, I teach a, um, an ESL class. Would it, is it possible to share more than one screen? Like, for example, I'm I, I want to share like two, um, you know, two pages from like a workbook or, or something. Is that possible on Zoom? Yes. So you can do a share screen. So I'm going to show you that really quickly. Um, and don't mind my crazy screen. So the only reason why I'm showing one screen at a time is because I have a lot of applications open, <laughs> but now you can see my entire screen. So I can show like stuff I'm working on on Microsoft Word. I can show different things that are on, you know, the two different, hold on, um, the two different platforms here. So I can be able to share multiple screens. You know, I can even make this smaller and pull up one screen here and another one over, um, over here on the other side. So yes, you can be able to do it on multiple screens. I hope that helped answer that question. <laughs> Yes, yes, I did. Thank you very much. I appreciate yeah, it. I just, I just shared one at a time because I didn't want you guys to see how many screens I, I have. I'm a person that has like multiple tabs open and multiple web browsers open. That's how I function. It's really weird. Stephanie, this is Sonia. Yes. Another Hi, question. Hi. When setting up the uh, invite for inviting other folks to participate, where do I put in their names for the invite? Okay, as far as having multiple hosts or? Uh, no, if I'm just inviting other people, I'm sending out the invitation for the actual meeting, meeting okay. itself. Yeah. So there's an option of, um, and I'll show you on Google. So let me pull that up really quickly. I'll share my screen in one moment just so that you don't see my multiple screens that are popping up. <laughs> so there is, let me, do it into my business account so it makes it a little bit more streamlined and that's that's what i'm oops actually no i'm signing on the other one all right so if you do you have it set up sonia into um, or integrating are you planning on integrating it with your gmail account the calendar yes mm -hmm. okay so let me show you that so over here when you're actually setting it up i'll pick a time I'm going to, let's go into more options so you can see here. When I'm setting it up here, it allows me to set that Zoom meeting. So again, you know, now Google has their Google Meet, um, which you can use, but the quality I feel like of the video is not that great, but I can set it up for my Google, my Zoom meeting, um, and it will be linked up on here. When I'm clicking it, you know, I'm entering whatever it may be in here, and then I can add all of my guests, their Gmail okay. accounts, whatever accounts they have. When they get this, a lot of times if they're not in your Gmail list, um, they're not a Gmail person or they're not in your company or so say like, are you sure you want to send it out to other people? You can mm -hmm. do that. I typically also like to copy and paste the Zoom links and the phone numbers in this section because sometimes oh, people okay. miss this part, right? Um, a lot of times if they won't even see this section, but I like to have it someplace else just so that they're like, what's the password? What's the da 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 da? I'll put, I'll copy all that information inside of this section. And that's how you can add multiple people into okay. that. Good. Okay. That was a good question. Any other questions? Hi, Stephanie. Um, my name is Sharon. Hi, how are you? Sorry, I'm just ringing from Ireland. And um, I'm actually a meditation teacher. Great. And starting to, um, I suppose, use, I use Zoom for one-to-ones, but I don't use them for uh, meditation classes. So my question is, um, I have the um, paid package, and yes. but I don't have the webinar part of it. So when you're doing, um, you know, I suppose, what is the best option just in your experience in relation to um, running a meditation class? Um, 
Is this yes, so by I, webinar or? I do it the same way, like just have this meeting set up right now. This is just, it's, I didn't pay for the extra webinar option. Um, I can have multiple people and I do meditations up to like two or three times a week for different corporations um, and for my, my meditation business. And so what I simply do is I have it um, opened up and I allow, um, allow people to come on in. I always ask people to turn off their video. I will turn off my video too, just because it can be a distraction. And then I'm able to have up to 100 people in there. Really, the webinar thing is more if you're doing like more of a big conference kind of kind of option. You really don't need to upgrade on it. That's if you want it to look like a professional webinar where they sign up like, you know, the countdown timer, how long you have until the webinar starts, yada, yada, yada. Um, for me, when I'm doing my classes, even if I'm doing like a fitness class or, or I teach a lot of my clients on how to have multiple people, I, I end up setting it up just like as we're doing here. I record them and then I just ask everyone to put their, um, put their uh, camera off so there's no distractions and I host that lovely meditation. So it's a really easy way. Is that, does that answer your question, Sharon? Yeah. That's great. Thanks, Amelia. Yeah. Don't need to pay for the extra thing. The, the extra webinar thing is if you're really going to do like massive webinars, like summits and stuff like that. But if you're not at that point and you're just teaching a class weekly, I wouldn't even bother to, to do that. Um, so if any, any other questions, I'll uh, be on here for a few more moments. If not, we can talk a little bit more about how to use, you know, really other ways that you can use Zoom for your business or if you want to expand your business on, on, um, online, because I know a lot of people are trying to figure out how to do that. No other questions? Awesome. So again, a um, couple of ways that you can do for Zoom is you can host a class, workshops, one-on-one -on -one with your clients, um, interview styles, group coaching sessions, podcasting. There's so many different things that you can use for Zoom, and I've used them all at some point in my life. Um, and if this has sparked any ideas on how to like use the platform for your own business, um, and you, you want to like even maybe start a podcast, I do have a, another webinar coming up on May 20th, in which I'm talking about how to use uh, how to podcast, and I use Zoom for my podcasting. And then, if you are interested on in taking your business online, I know a lot of people have had businesses in which they meet their clients face to face, and now with COVID. Um, and the changes of what's going on. They're now trying to figure out how they can reach their market. I am offering a free business strategy session so we can talk a little bit more on how to take your service-based business online. So awesome. I'm glad that you've already signed up for the webinar on Zoom. So yeah, that will be on the 20th. You will get the inf information in regards to that. Um, I think I sent it out on Eventbrite to let people know that there's another training going on. That would be also uh, recorded. So if you can't make it live, don't worry about that. And if you are interested in a business strategy session, I am offering those for free for those people who are, uh, have attended or signed up. Even if you are watching the uh, replay, you will have the opportunity to hop on a 30 minute call with me and talk about a little bit more how we can reach your clients, expand that growth, um, set up all your systems and your processes online, launch a course, um, launch uh, workshops, whatever it may be, and um, really grow and Get those clients that you are been looking for so you can still service them whether it's from the comfort of your home i've been doing this since 2016 and i absolutely love um working online it just gives me the flexibility and the freedom to uh be able to take care of my family and not have to worry about anything else that is it you will be getting from me tomorrow the recording so you can watch this again and then i'm going to be giving you out a little like cheat sheet guide on how to set up all that stuff so um, again, you can be able to see how to do it stuff step by step. It's just a little, little PDF. Um, and so keep your eyes open up to an email from me in regards to that. And 